Everybody, welcome to our webinar presentation today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Gareth Dyke, and this is a webinar presentation brought to you by Diffusion Editing and Bentham Science, a leading publisher of ebooks and online open access and hybrid journals. I would like to do a quick sound check, if I may, to make sure that you can hear me. Let me just ask you, can you please just type into the chat box if you can hear me so that we can make sure that everything is working properly today. Are you there? If you have questions throughout the course of our webinar presentation today, then please feel free to write them into the chat box as well as we go on through our presentation, you will then be able, we will have the opportunity to answer any questions that you may have at the end of our session today. Yes, thank you, excellent. So the sound is working perfectly. Thank you all of those colleagues who helped me out with a quick sound check. We are going to get started now with our content because today in our webinar, again, brought to you jointly by Bentham Science and Diffusion Editing, we are going to be talking about statistics and data presentation. One of the biggest issues, let me tell you, that journals around the world face with submissions, issues with data presentation, issues with statistical analyses. Often it's very difficult for journals indeed to get suitable reviewers for these kinds of papers. My name, as I've already mentioned, is Gareth Dyke. I'm an academic. I have deep experience working as a researcher, publishing my own work, but also more recently working as an editor, managing journals managing international journals and handling the peer review process. So I hope that some of the tips, some of the insights, some of the tricks that we will pass on in our presentation today will be useful for you in your future writing and publishing career. That is, after all, the goal of all of these Bentham Science Diffusion Editing Joint webinar presentations. Our goal is to help you be more effective at doing the tasks that researchers face every day. So you're probably asking yourself, what are we going to talk about in this presentation today? We are going to discuss in the next 45 minutes or so three issues. Understanding data and the basics of statistical analysis. Secondly, effective data presentation. And thirdly, we're going to come on and look at how you can effectively sell the message of your work based on your data, of course, analyzing your data and presenting your data in your articles to those leading international journals in order that you can more easily perform statistics and data presentation as an author. So that's the basis of our presentation today. Let's get started. Let's think about statistics and data presentation. I don't know how to do statistics, but it doesn't matter because I don't have any data. This is certainly often how I feel as a researcher working in my own particular subject area where data set sizes are small. I'm a paleontologist, so we work on individual fossils often. So we often don't have much data to analyze, but your field may very well be quite different. Hence the reason that you have joined us for this webinar today. So let's cover a few basics. Statistical analysis is, of course, an essential component of academic research. Often, analytical skills are must-have toolkit skills for any researcher as an academic. But of course, a lot of this is transferable 
into other walks of life. So your statistical analysis skills will also be useful in commercial, industry, and business settings. A lot of what we teach in these training courses, of course, are transferable skills. Many of the things that you'll gain at the beginning, especially of your research career, can stand you in good stead even if you don't continue and go on to work in research in the future. Secondly, then, data presentation. This is the ability to communicate your results clearly and effectively as you tell a story. So don't forget statistics, statistical analysis. It's not the same thing as data presentation. We're going to talk about the two of these issues in our webinar today. So we are looking at the science then in terms of statistical analysis and data collection, collection, presentation, analysis, and the reasonable interpretation of your data. I'm not going to read out the quote on this particular slide. It's useful, nevertheless, to have a read over it. And don't forget, you don't have to worry about reading all of the content on our slides today because we will provide you with a recording of this webinar presentation. Everybody listening to this presentation, everybody who's registered for this presentation today will get a recording of this video so that you can watch again, you can share this content with your colleagues and with your students. And throughout this presentation, you will see on the slides some examples of the journals and the ebooks, open access and hybrid journals, as well as ebooks in the area of mathematics and statistical analysis that are published by Bentham Science. If you'd like more information about the services, about the journals, about the ebooks that our colleagues at Bentham Science publish, then please feel free to get in touch with us with them after this webinar presentation. So what is statistics? Maybe you're thinking this is very basic, Gareth. What are you talking about? But it's nevertheless important to have a thorough grounding in some of this basic information as we get started with our presentation today. Statistics, of course, describes a numeric data set on the basis of a number of variables, the center, the variability, and the shape for example, statistics also can be used to describe a categorical set of data on the basis of a number of characteristics, frequency, percentage, or categorical proportions, for example. So what is data? We will ask how you can present your data, how you can look at sampling and variables, correlation and causation, and how you can use these characteristics of your data in the construction of your figures and your tables. We'll come back and we'll talk about the learning outcomes of this presentation. And of course, as I mentioned, there will be time for any questions at the end of this webinar. So what is data? A collection of facts, values, or measurements, the raw material of academic research, the raw material of science, containing information that we as researchers are going to extract. And of course, this extraction step is done through data presentation, interpretation, and statistical analysis. There are a number of presentation formats that we'll touch on in our webinar today as well, including types of data, numbers, summary statistics and variables, correlation versus causation. And finally, we'll look at how you can present this information effectively in your articles, your figures, and of course, your data tables at the end. So let's get going. Think about kinds of data that we encounter as researchers, either, of course, qualitative or quantitative. So I might collect qualitative data, for example, from an interview with a patient. How are you feeling? What do you think about this? What's your interpretation of that? But of course, most of the time, we as academic researchers are working with numeric, with quantitative data, which of course can either be nominal or categorical, ordinal, comprised of integers, 
or quotients, real or irrational, as you can see on this slide in front of you on the screen, the different kinds of data that will get collected. And so, as a researcher, when you present your data in your articles, it's very important to follow and conform to those journal editorial conventions. And here are a few of them on this slide. How you can present your numbers in text, your data in your presentations. General rules include that numbers up to and including nine in your text should be written out in full, i.e. one, two, etc. Whereas larger numbers above 10 as a rule of thumb are written out as numerals and we use effectively rounded numbers up to 10,000 so you can see how that works on this slide as well and then for numbers over 10,000 characteristically a mixture of digits and words are used so this is how we think about getting started we think about how to begin putting together our presentations and of course we are also thinking as analysts basically in terms of sampling. Are we taking samples that are non-probabilistic in their nature or are we doing performing probability-based samples? In the first case, some elements of the population have no chance of selection where the probability of selection can't be accurately determined. So the kinds of sampling that you would use as a researcher would be different. Whereas in the latter case, in probability sampling, each unit in your population has a chance greater than zero of being selected. And so this probability can be accurately determined by analysis. So we would be doing one with numeric data, with quantitative data, one or the other of these sampling protocols. So the second thing then to consider in terms of qualitative and quantitative values, because of course these variables either can or cannot be assigned a specific numeric value, are we then looking at discrete, categorical, nominal, ordinal, or continuous data? What kind of data are you thinking about? What kind of data are you collecting in your research project? This is the first step and often, most sensibly, of course, these are the kinds of things that you should think about before you start your analysis. So that, of course, you are collecting the right kind of data to answer your particular research question. Very, very important. And then so once you collect the data, often researchers, often academics will then go in and initially present some kind of summary of that data. This is what I do first with my presentations, with my research projects, a summary table. And we'll talk later about how to construct effective tables in our presentation today. But of course, we are looking at how you can summarize data, recording how often each value of a variable occurs, how you can build a table as shown here, but this is the starting point often, almost always for these kinds of analyses. Putting your data, having thought about what kind of data you are collecting, then of course initially presenting your data in a summary table. Then we go on to think about summarizing the variation, summarizing the message in our data by performing initial summary statistics, used of course to summarize a set of observations in order often to communicate the largest amount as simply as possible. So often the commonly used kinds of summary statistics that researchers would initially apply to a particular data set would include things like a measure of location, central tendency, average, mean, median, or mode, for example, a measure of spread, the most common of which is the standard deviation, or a measure of the shape of your distribution, its skewedness. You can do this easily, as you'll see later, by plotting a histogram. And then if you are interested in more than one variable in your analysis, 
then we're going to be looking for a measure of dependence, perhaps including correlation. So these are the kinds of summary statistics that people think about initially.